Despite the dangers of skiing, about 200 million skiers and 70 million snowboarders worldwide take to the slopes to practice their moves. The exhilaration that skiing provides is most likely the reason that many people hit the mountains year after year once the temperature drops. But children especially have to be careful on the slopes, especially those who don't have that much experience. The following story explains how one teen went on his school ski trip only to learn that the real danger didn't lie with his skiing but instead something else entirely. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Jack, age 14 of Southport Merseyside in England, was ecstatic to be going on his school skiing trip. While most schools don't take their students on such thrill-seeking trips, Tarleton Academy does and they assured parents that everything would run smoothly. Skiing can be dangerous for even the most advanced adults, and Jack's father, Stuart Fox, 48, knew what a risk skiing could be. He warned Jack that he must wear a helmet and err on the side of caution, despite what his peers were doing. Jack promised his dad he would do this, and in late February, he left for Austria. At the beginning of the trip, Jack was having a great time, skiing smoothly down the mountain and enjoying time with his friends. But on his last run of the last day of the six-day ski trip, something terrible happened. About eight students were with an Austrian ski instructor when they took their skis off so they could take pictures of the scenery. While at the top of the mountain, most of Jack's peers took their helmets off so they could take pictures, but Jack kept his on. He stopped to take a picture of his pails and then suddenly lost his balance, falling backwards off the mountain. One moment I was fine, the next my boots were slipping and I was gone, Jack said. He wound up plunging 2,500 feet which is the equivalent of two Eiffel Towers. Jack was shouting for help as he was falling, but no words even came out of his mouth because he had snow stuck in his mouth. Meanwhile, the rest of the students left at the top of the mountain were crying and praying for Jack, and the instructor was pretty upset. It was safe to say this was a dangerous fall, and Jack's teacher, Jack Snowden, was scared out of his mind for the boy. Jack recalled the horrifying moment he fell, saying, I thought that was it, that I'd be killed. He remembered it was a complete sheer drop to the mountain floor and he said to himself, you can do this. But as he came down the mountain, he kept trying to dig his feet in the snow and pull his body up with his arms. Jack was crashing through the ice so quickly and was bouncing off every rock he passed by. It was terrifying to say the least. But after a while of tumbling, eventually Jack came to a halt. He checked everywhere to make sure that he hadn't broken anything and everything seemed fine. But soon he noticed the horrible pain in his arms. As I fell, my jacket pushed up to my elbows and I got to one point where I started to slow down and I moved over to one arm because the other one was hurting, Jack said. That's when he realized that his left arm was in dire pain. When Jack finally reached the bottom of the mountain, he was immediately airlifted to Salzburg Hospital. At the hospital, doctors found that he had severe ice burns on his left arm and slightly less serious ones on his right, just as Jack had expected. Jack's teacher, Jack Snowden, caught up with him at the hospital and stayed close by as he underwent treatment. He called Jack's father to let him know what happened, and for Stuart Fox, it was a dreaded call. I got the call from this distressed teacher, and because of the tone in his voice, the first thing I asked was, is he alive? Knowing he had packed for his son to go to Austria for the ski trip, and now the teacher was calling, he feared for the worst. Fox was told that Jack was with the advanced group of skiers and had gone to the top of the mountain to a well-known beautiful spot on a ledge. He learned that everyone was taking photos at the spot and that his son was facing forward and taking photos of the view. Snowden told Fox that Jack lost his footing, but noted that he was not taking a selfie of himself, instead he was taking photos of others. His friends tried to go after Jack, but they couldn't get too close to the edge or else they would have fallen too. But Snowden reassured Fox that his son was alive, and that's when his thoughts turned from sheer dread to relief. He could have easily died, Fox said. Jack's mom, Amanda, age 41, had only praise for Snowden and the rest of Jack's teachers. While Jack recovered, he was shocked to learn that his iPhone survived the fall as well and was brought to him by one of his teachers. He noticed his phone acted a bit funny at first, but once it dried out, it worked perfectly. To his surprise, all the photos he took right before his fall were still there. As far as Jack's arm, Jack's mom says his right arm was doing just fine, but his left was quite a mess. Despite everything that's happened to him, he says he's lucky to be here. It could have been a totally different story. He's here to tell the tale, which is the important thing. Now Jack already has a ski trip planned for next year, and he says 
It was his photography, not his skiing, that was the problem. While most people wouldn't have survived such a traumatic fall, Jack credits his survival to one thing. The fact that he was wearing a helmet. Kids think that helmets aren't cool, but Jack has just now realized that they are. Jack said that when you ride horses or play a sport, you do need a helmet. My helmet was cracked and had bits fallen off of it. As I was going down, I was trying to stop myself by digging my boots in, but it flipped me over and hit my head. It was a scary experience and was the first time I'd ever thought I was going to die. Jack is happy to be alive and is excited for the future ahead where he hopes to be a nuclear power engineer.